Come and be on your feet, everyone. If you know that the Lord woke you up this morning, shout a loud hallelujah. And if you know that your head does not come from a tree, but it comes from the Lord God Almighty, shout a loud hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And welcome to church this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why I thank you. That was awesome. 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 Our help does not come from man. Our help comes from God. Not just any God. The God that made the heavens and the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning we are so, so privileged. <laughs> This is our month to get help. And God has been helping us. Amen. We are privileged this morning to have a bishop in our midst. Hallelujah. As of praise, it's not every time you see a bishop come to bless you. Right? So we are so privileged. And the man of God we have this morning was once the father of this zone. Amen. He was in charge of our zona headquarters before he was moved to Wari. Amen. And he's been in various parts of the nation ministering the word of God and blessing the people of God. His last place of service was at the Wari South Bishopric where he served as the bishop. And by the grace of God, he served meritoriously. And last year, by reason of age, he retired gracefully. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so this morning, he's here to minister to us. He's here to bless us. He's here to release the Father's blessing unto us. Please join me this morning, House of Praise, as we make welcome to Bishop Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. This morning, somebody is blessed. If you are the one, say, I am the one. I am the one. I want to be grateful to God that. Uh, I'm privileged to be here. Yeah. When I was in VI, both of you, you were pregnant of this church. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. And no sooner I left, you gave birth. Glory. And since that time, I have not been privileged to be here to worship with you. So I want to thank God that today. Yeah. Lord. I will thank God for your lives, for what God has used you to do, and is still using you to do. Yes. The Lord will keep blessing you. Yes. Let me also appreciate God's servant who has been drafted to share in this dream. <laughs> and then once in a while I will call. And he will tell me God has been faithful. And to God be the glory today, I am here by his invitation. I came into Lagos briefly and then he said, you have to wait and bless us on Sunday. I said, no problem. I am retired now, so I am freer. <laughs> so that is why I am here. And my coming here is to bless somebody. Yeah. And who is that person? May you be the one. Yeah. I say, may you be the one. Yeah. So I appreciate Reverend Tony and Mavio and his wife. They took care of me. And then by his day tomorrow, I'll be leaving back to Wafi. The Lord bless you. I'm also aware that you have been on uh, a prayer program, right? Yes. And today is the seventh day. 
This prayer program will not be a waste. Amen. God is going to reach out to everyone. That what you believe God for in these seven days, the Lord will bring it to pass. Your amen is not alive. Amen. Father, we thank you for this wonderful moment that you have orchestrated to take us from where we are to where you want us to be. Therefore, I stand in the authority of your name to declare your word today and as your word comes forth may every word I'm going to speak be your word for us and may these words find expressions in our lives that at the end of today's service somebody will go home with a testimony and God's name will be glorified thank you father for doing this for in Jesus mighty name I pray Amen. Amen Shall we be seated Thank you choir for that wonderful piece What is the young lady I think you are my daughter now Yeah when I say she's my girl She's doing well God bless you God bless you Now listen and listen well Where is your clock You have any clock for me to Okay alright this morning, I have come to assure you that when you pray to a living God that we have, He cannot and He will not disappoint you. Are you with me? Learn to respond to me, please. From on the first, today is the seventh day, you have been in His presence. The God we have come to call upon is not deaf. He hears. He is concerned about us. And I believe God is concerned about every one of us here in church. Now, listen to this. Limitation is a mark of humanity. Limitation is a mark of humanity. While stagnation is demonic. When you remain in one place year after year, year after year, that cannot be God. So stagnation is demonic. But I have a good news. The good news is that progress, upliftment, victory, is of God. I come in again. Limitation is a mark of humanity. Many of us here, there are things you want to do. You, you, you try to do it, but you are limited. Why? You are human. And I said, stagnation is demonic. And if somebody here has been stagnated today, that demonic power will be destroyed. Amen. But we have come to serve a God that in Him is victory. In Him is progress. In Him is upliftment. So God has all of this for someone. And now to crown it all here is when divinity align with humanity. Don't forget, humanity is limited. Divinity is unlimited. Now, when divinity align with humanity, then victory, progress, upliftment is inevitable. And what you have come to do for the past seven days is divinity aligning with humanity so that your desires will break forth. Did I make myself clear? So if maybe you want the topic of this message, I wrote here, divinity aligning with humanity at the altar of prayers. 
divinity aligning with humanity where at the altar of prayers so from on the first second to today the seventh you've come to align connect with divinity and if that is true then what you are believing God for must come to pass Now, having said that, listen to this. There is a book in the Bible that I have read. And that book, from chapter 1 to chapter 10, there is no mention of God in that book. I didn't see anywhere to talk about God in that book. No Jesus is mentioned there. No prophet is mentioned there, but I discovered, though God was not mentioned, God was walking behind the scene. And somebody is in church this morning, you may not have been known to be a mighty man of God, or a prophet, but you believe in this simple gospel. I see God walking behind the scene for you. And which book is that in the Bible? The book of Esther. In the book of Esther, I took my time to read through at least the King James Version. Maybe other versions may want to bring in God, I wouldn't know. But King James, no God is mentioned. But God was in action. May God be in action in your life. Now, in that same book, something happened which is profound. Listen. I discovered the great king they call King Ahasuerus. I discovered the queen, Esther. I discovered the man they called Haman. Which was captured Haman, the enemy of the Jews. I discovered a great man they called Mordecai. And Mordecai is called Mordecai the Jew. Now something happened in that book. When you go home, only 10 chapters, you can finish it in one day very well. Can I ask you to read that book? Then you will get my message clearer. In that book, something happened. That a man they call Haman conspired. And in agreement, he has said, the Jews must be annihilated, wiped out, destroyed completely. And while he did that, he convinced the great king Ahasuerus to sign. So a letter was written to say all the Jews must be killed in one day. And when Mordecai the great man heard this, he was troubled. Now listen to me, he was troubled. And he said, what do I do? I am a Jew, and all the Jews must not be wiped out. But by what has been written, which is the law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be altered, it means this issue will be carried out. So where do I go from here? Who comes to our rescue? And don't forget, he remembered. That my daughter Esther is the queen. Let me go and meet the queen. Maybe she could be of help. And now he came to the queen in sackcloth. And the queen said, You don't come to the palace like this. Go and change. He said, What I am here for is more than what you are seeing. What is the matter? And it was explained. 
Now that is where prayer comes in. So I'm going to read Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4, verse number 15 to 17. Esther chapter 4. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. And Esther said, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I, Esther, I also, and my maidens we will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. Mark that. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Are you following me? Now go to chapter 5 from verse 1 to 3. That same Esther. Now it came to pass. On the third day. Don't forget. He said go fast. Pray for me for three days. Let's see what God will do. And it came to pass. On the third day. That Esther put on her royal apparel. And stood in the inner court of the king's house. Over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne. In the royal house, over against the gate of the house. Now, verse 2 is important to me. And it was so. And it was so. When the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained what? Favor. May somebody obtain favor by your prayer these seven days. He obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out to, the, to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou? What do you wish, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be, it shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. If you are clapping, clap when I don't be afraid. Now let's stop there. When I say go home and read this book, you will like it. Mordecai was in a fix. There was nowhere to run to but to see what something will come out of his move to Esther. And many of us have been in a fix like that. You turn this way, no solution. This way, no solution. But for these seven days, there will be solution. So when Mordecai came, he came because that was the only hope he had. And after all, Esther said, for these 30 days, the, the king is on a retreat. Let me use that word to make it a bit mild. And nobody goes to see the king except he sent for him or her. And there is a law. The law is if anyone goes in without being sent for, that person must die. Either the queen or whosoever. So I, I cannot go to see the king. And Mordecai said, the day has been fixed. If you don't go now, we are all finished. And don't forget, you are also a Jew. 
it became so difficult. And Esther now said, Go, gather the Jew. Let them pray. For how many days? How many days? Three days. Fast for three days for me. I am going to go in the strength of that fast to break protocols, to dismantle the law of the Medes and the Persians. To see the king on our behalf. And if I perish, I perish. Now, don't forget I said God was not mentioned, but God heard every conversation. May I assure someone, the prayers you made, unheard by your head pastor, unheard by anyone, God heard you. I said, God heard you now. And today, as I join my faith to your faith to pray, I stand in this assurance that God will wipe away your tears. So, what was Esther's prayer point? For three days, pray for me. And she was saying, God, when I go in to see the king, may he raise the scepter. Because without him raising the scepter, you are finished. May he raise the scepter in my favor. That was the prayer point. Number two prayer point. That when I meet with him, whatsoever I tell him is what he would do. <laughs> that was the prayer point for three days and now in verse 2 the scripture says and it was so and it was so may I prophesy upon someone that the prayer you have made the answer shall be it is so it shall be so for you it shall be so for you oh if you believe that stand up and say a better amen it shall be so for you so the scripture said and it was so when the king saw Esther what Esther prayed for came to pass Esther found favor before the king. And the king raised the scepter. Golden scepter. My queen, come closer. And she walked. And she walked. And she took the scepter. Now look at this. He said, what is your wish? What wilt thou? What is your wish? Then second question. What do you want? Two things. Now hear me and hear me well. Many of us here we have wish or wishes. But we have not made a demand. What wilt thou? And what do you want? Now time will fail me to say all that, all that Esther demanded were given to her. Did you hear me now? Go read that book. Even after everything was done, the king was still asking her, I have done this, I have done that. What else do you want? What else do you want? Now that was as a result of what? Prayer. Did you hear me? Prayer can dismantle what the enemy has assembled. I'm talking to someone now. Prayer can make a way where there seems to be no way. Prayer can remove shame. Prayer 
Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But when you pray, you will not perish. I see God walking behind the scene on the behalf of somebody here. That God will begin to fight your battle. God will begin to fight your battle. And every of your prayer point, the Lord will do it. So that your joy will be full. And God's name will be glorified. So when you are asked to pray, pray. What must you do? Pray. Pray. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, the scripture says, and it came to pass, that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say. Let me stop there. This was Jesus' disciples asking him to teach them to pray. Like John taught his disciples to pray. Now if they desire to know how to pray that it means prayer is important yeah it's important so teach us to pray and jesus taught them how to pray but number one very important he said when you pray say let me stop there say now many of us we don't say anything. We just murmur. Don't murmur. Say something. What wilt thou? And what do you want? Say it. So whatsoever you have said in these seven days, the God you pray to is not deaf. He hears. And I stand here to declare that he will hear you and it will bring it to pass and your joy will be full in the name of Jesus say something say something what will thou in other words what are the things you are wishing for yourself you can wish so many things but place a demand on God did you hear me place a demand on God you are looking at me as you are all looking at me with your different faces so your demands are different but we have a god that can meet all demands that is the god you have come to pray for for the past seven days may god answer somebody here <laughs> now if you look at i said we have the king ahasuerus a powerful king. Now listen to this. Ahasuerus was the king that controlled 127 states. Nigeria has how many states? 36. Los Abuja. Now the US, they have how many states? 50 states. A whole powerful US. But at that time, Ahasuerus controlled 127 states, provinces. He must be a powerful king. He had a strong man behind him. He called Haman. Haman made himself the enemy of the Jew. That is where he missed it. May you be a Jew. He didn't hear that. I said, may you be a Jew. You know, when we were young in the village, so growing up, all those uh, boys, they called themselves, say, we are God. We are God. Eh? But we, who we are church boys, they call us Jews. I don't know whether you know, at least, yeah? So you are a Jew. I better be a Jew than be a guy. <laughs> Now the Bible said Mordecai was a Jew. 
And when things began to happen against Haman, his wife told Haman, he said, if this man, Mordecai, be a seed of the Jew, you all don't finish. Hey! You already fallen. And that was prophetic. In Christ you are a Jew. And whosoever makes himself your enemy is in trouble. Did you hear that now? So, Haman, the Bible calls him the enemy of the Jews. He didn't end up well. Because he made himself an enemy of the Jews. And for you and I who are Christians in Christ, whosoever makes himself our enemy is in trouble. Did you hear that now? Don't forget, I say God is walking behind where? The sin. He fights your battle. He fights your battle. So, what happened here? I believe God is going to do it for somebody in this church. Now, the things I want to bring out, listen now. If you read the Bible, we discover that the same Haman, who was a strong man, plotted to kill Mordecai the next day. Follow me closely. Today he planned with his wife and his friends and they said, that guy who has refused to bow to you because he calls himself a Jew, deal with him. He said, yeah, I, I will deal with him. What do I do? Prepare a gallow. Very high gallow. Hanging, let the world see him hanging there. And the gallows was prepared today. Then tomorrow morning, go and meet the king. Tell him, you want to hang this idiot. Once you tell him, come and hang him. Now, between today and tomorrow, here it is. The Bible says that night, the king could not sleep. Are you following me? Mordecai is supposed to be hanged the next day. But that night, the king could not sleep. Why couldn't this king sleep? Don't forget God was walking behind the scene. Something happened some time ago that Mordecai saved the king from being killed. And the good works he did, nobody cared. But it was recorded. And that night, the king will walk this way. Come and play me music. They will play music. You cannot sleep. Stop the music. Let me try. No way. He could not sleep. What do I do? Hey, the scribes. Come and open the book of the records. And when the scribe opened the book, the very page he opened was the page where they recorded what Mordecai did. And he read, Mordecai saved your life. He said, yes, I remember. So what was done for him by what he did? He said, nothing. Ah, ah, that is not good. That is not good. Ah, tomorrow I will do something. No sooner he promised God that he would do something, he was able to sleep. The next morning, Haman hurriedly came to the outer court to want to tell the king he wants to hand Mordecai. But the king already had packaged a gift. And he was saying, now, who's in the court? He said, Mordecai, oh, very good. I mean, uh, Haman, Haman, please come in. Haman just came in. And as he came in, he said, now, Haman, listen, listen, listen. Before you say your own, this is my own. What should be done to the man that the king wants to honor? And then Haman, in his uh, ignorance and stupidity, <laughs> He said, well, who else will the king honor, if not me? I think it should be me. 
Now he began to recommend what should be done to the man the king wants to honor. Seven things he recommended. Let me read them for you. How many things? I said, how many things? Seven things. May your enemy recommend for your promotion. Oh, yes. Seven things. Haman said, Your Majesty, the person you want to honor, number one, let the royal apparel be brought with the king used it to wear. That your royal apparel, your ceremonial dress that you normally use on big occasions, that royal apparel should be given. Number two, let the horse that the king rided upon also be brought. Number three, the royal crown which is set upon your head be removed to put on him. The king was watching. Number what now? Number four, let these things I, I enumerated be given, delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. Number five, that they may array. The word array means they will come and dress, decorate the man the king wants to offer. Number six, then when they have dressed him, bring him on the horseback. On the horseback. Then go through the streets of the city. The number seven. Proclaim. Before him. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king wants to honor. And the king said, Haman, he said, yes sir. All you have said now, you have it. You go and decorate who Mordecai hey! hold it may God go before your enemies may God go ahead of your enemies when the king said that what he had in mind he can't alter it and I begin to wonder how the person he wanted to hang, the gallows have been prepared. That is the same person is asking to, is being asked to decorate. And not just decorating him, after doing that, he will put him on the horse. Then he will be in front of the person. Maybe he will carry bear and be ringing. This is the man. <laughs> This is the man that the king delighted to honor. And he took him round the street of the city. What a humiliation. May God, may God disgrace your enemies. All of this happened because somebody prayed. Are you following me? When you pray, Things will turn around for your good. When you pray, your enemies are confused. Instead of destroying you, they will decorate you. That is what happened. Tomorrow, he will be hanged. But that same tomorrow, instead of being hanged and destroyed, he was decorated. Because God went ahead. May that same God go ahead on your behalf. Can I have a better amen to that? I say, may that same God go ahead on your behalf now. So that all was settled. He became 
the great man. Now, if you read down, you will now see what happened again and again that this same Mordecai became the next in command to that great king. Only God can do that. And the God we serve is the same God of yesteryears. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and for forever. What he did in the days of Mordecai, can he still do it now? Yeah. He can. And if he did it for Mordecai, can he do it for you? Yeah. Mordecai and Esther prayed for only three days. And you have prayed for how many days? Seven days. May God come to somebody's rescue. I say, may God be attentive to your prayers. Now, if you read down, I've given you an assignment. If you do it, beautiful. But if you don't do it, no wahala. But I pray you do it. What is your assignment? Go home, read the book of Esther. How many chapters? Ten chapters only. Chapter 10, only three, three, three verses. So it's not a very big deal. When you read that, you will discover. Don't forget. Before Haman planned to destroy Mordecai, he has already settled in writing the killing of all the Jews. Do you remember? Fine. But after this episode, now hold it, hold it. I almost forgot this. After all the whole mess, why they were that dilemma? Somebody came and told the king that this Mordecai prepared a gallow for, I mean, this Haman made a gallow for Mordecai. The king said, What? Go and hang Haman on that same gallows. Did you hear that now? Did you follow me? He prepared where to hang Mordecai. The same gallows is where he was hung. That is God for you. What is this song? No, no. What the enemies meant for evil. He are, okay, turning around. Yes. He is turning around. What the enemy meant for evil. He is turning around. Oh my good. Do you like that? Whatsoever the enemy meant for evil, for you, by these seven days, I stand on this altar in agreement with God's word to declare and decree that God will turn it around for your good. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, they plot to annihilate the Jews. Please sit down. After all said and done, don't forget, the king was still asking Esther, what can I do again for you? <laughs> so, I like that king. What can I do again for you? Esther said, it remains one serious one. This same Haman has written that they should destroy all the Jews including me, your wife. Who? He said, hey? He said, yes. So what do I do? He said, why not uh, revoke it? But don't forget, the laws of the Medes and the Persians cannot be revoked. Cannot be revoked. So what do we do? Take my ring. Go and write the one you want to write. That's what they call decree. You know, decree supersedes law. Do you know that? Lawyers, are they here? Okay. When a decree comes, law is suspended. It's not revocable, but it's suspended. He said, take my ring. Write what you want. And then take it around again. So, Mordecai and Esther took the king's ring. That ring was taken from Haman. Because Haman had the authority of the king. You know, when the king, they have the ring, special ring, whatever is written, they will just stamp it. 
And that's all. To take the ring, right. And he wrote, reversing or countering or writing to say that other one is kept suspended. This is the new law. And no sooner it was done, the dispatch riders took it round all over the 127 provinces by express Korea. May God do your own expressly. So when that happened, Haman was hanged. If you read down again, even his ten sons were also hanged. It's as serious as that. In other words, his empire gone. Three days prayers. God was doing wonders. How much more seven days? This seven day will give you a smile. Yeah. These seven days will remove shame from you. These seven days will project you for greatness. These seven days will decorate you now. In the name of Jesus. Now if you read down, I was told and confirmed that the letter which was signed, sealed, and delivered was pushed aside. Because somebody prayed. Then at the end of the day, I discovered, here it is, that King Ahasuerus, Esther, and Mordecai, three of them, were now ruling the kingdom. And of course, the ring was with uh, Mordecai. Do you remember... Joseph and Pharaoh. At a point, Pharaoh said, Joseph, I'm only Pharaoh on this chair. You have the power. Do you remember? It's in the Bible. Joseph, I'm only Pharaoh on this chair, but the power to rule, and you are the one. That's what happened here again. Lazarus was on the chair. He said, the ring, take. Whatever you say, confirm. Now, if that is true, which is very true, I stand by the authority of God's word to decree over your life that in this Lagos, many of you are strangers in Lagos. But in this same Lagos, you will rule. In this Lagos, you will do well. The land of Lagos will favor you. In the name of Jesus. Mordecai was a foreigner. Joseph was a foreigner. Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, they were foreigners. But because they were Jews, the God of the Jews was with them. They were in control in a foreign land. Therefore, you may have come from your village to Lagos. You will not go back empty. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm going to pray. My time is up. Am I right? My time is up. Yeah. I'm going to pray. Two or three prayers. I don't pray long prayers. Number one prayer. There are things written about you. Which are not augering well. But in the physical and in the spirit realm. Now, what we read here, there was a letter written, signed, sealed, and delivered, waiting for execution. But, the God of the Jews reversed it. May I pray for someone? There may have been some letters written working against your destiny in life or maybe where you walk they have given you a query and that query is working against your promotion or maybe in your family they have marked you down for destruction whatsoever has been written 
known to you or unknown. If the God will serve is alive, let him be God. Put it. I began by saying limitation is a mark of humanity. Did I say that? Stagnation is demonic. But God is the one that brings deliverance, success, and progress. Name it. Now, if you think there are certain things working against your life, and you, you feel it that it can't be ordinary. Yeah? Can't be ordinary. Let these seven days, let God walk on the, behind the scene for me. Let that, that, that writing be canceled. The Bible said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was contrary, that was against us. And he took it off the way and nailed it to his cross talking about jesus and you are here that ordinance working against you today today will be taken out of the way if you think you need that prayer can you just come out we have enough space here quick 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 my time is up if you need that prayer come out what enemy man for evil God has turned it around oh yes turn it around what enemy man for evil God has turned it around for my good thank you I don't have enough time be careful there those of you be careful the communion be careful father i lift up my hands and i pray for your sons and your daughters i pray for these ones esther said gather them let them pray for me and they prayed for her and you answered her father i am praying for these ones lord you will answer them whatsoever be their needs whatsoever be their desire whatsoever is working against them here on earth making them to be stagnated making them not to make progress in life whatsoever is working against their lives and they agree with the man of god and say let us pray and they pray for these seven days father i stand by the authority on this altar to lift up my hands and decree over their lives today will be the end of that reproach in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit amen arise unto a new life arise unto a new life Canada. my time is up but I, I, I must pray for everyone. Thank you, Jesus. What an enemy meant for evil. God has turned it in around for my good. I was talking with uh, my pastor and we were discussing. And he told me that there was a, a scripture you were using to pray yesterday or whatever isaiah 41 right from verse 10 and i read it and i was happy that that scripture is of god now if you read down that scripture 10 11 12 a point came where god said those who are incensed against you they will be a thing of nothing you will not see them again that's what happened to haman Mordecai did not see Haman again in his life. Himself, his children, because if the sons were alive, they would fight back after many years. So the king said, kill both the man and the sons. Then as a church, I want to pray. Like I said, 
you were pregnant of this church, this branch. And uh, I know you people spent so much to bet this church. Thank God you are alive and you will be alive to see the glory of this church more than what it is now. So I'm going to pray. That's why I came to pray for you. That this church will become more glorious than what I have seen today. Do you agree with that? A man of God was talking to us and he said, as a young minister in his own church then, many years ago, that he was fasting and praying for growth. And there was no growth. People will come today, they will go tomorrow. Another one come, they go. And he said, God, what is happening? One day, into the church, closed the door, only him, and he prayed. Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and said, God, there must be a change. And while he was praying, God said, get up. He got up. He said, go outside. He went outside. He said, look up. And he looked up. God opened his eyes to see a thick cloud covering the church building. And that cloud was there, very thick. And God said, that is the problem. He said, now I know what to pray for and how to pray. And he went back again and fired prayer. <laughs> and after much prayers, the cloud rolled away. What I am saying now is real. And today, that man's ministry is all over the place. And who is the man? Oyedipo. Oyedipo. As a young minister, he didn't start like this. He went through hard time. But today, the cloud of the enemy rolled away. I'm going to pray for house of prayer. That the glory of God will rest upon this house. Every cloud that is not of God will not gather over this house. And every member that comes to worship in this church, they will see the glory of God. Now I decree over your life that from today let the hand of God walk behind the scene on behalf of the house of praise in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and every force that militates against the growth and expansion of the church and the members. Today it must come to an end. Let God by himself decorate this church. Let God by himself decorate members of this church. Let God by himself open doors for you. Let God by himself showcase you for greatness. Let God raise men to announce this church in this vicinity. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let those that believe shout a better amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are blessed. I'm okay. I'm okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're going to have Bishop's communion. Okay. Uh, so when we have a bishop in the house, we receive all the blessings. So he will minister the communion and anoint us again today. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now listen. I don't know if you understand the mystery behind communion. If you understand, you don't take this thing lightly. Hear me and hear me well. Before they left Egypt, God said, do something like this. Because you are going far. And they did it. And I call that one the, the supper. They took it in haste. And the strength they needed to overcome the attacks on the way, they received it. As you partake in this communion, 
whatsoever arrow has been positioned against your life, I, I am convinced that by your faith in today's communion, that arrow, allow me to use this word, return back to sender. Did that offend anybody? Did that offend you? Arrow, return back to who? The sender. When Jesus was to leave finally, he conducted a communion. And he said, let us take the last of us at the upper room. Why did he do that? He did that because there was need to strengthen the disciples by reason of what they are going to go through in life. And they had that communion. And Jesus said, I'm taking this with you now, and I won't take it with you again until we meet over there. Then we will take it again. And so when that happened, he left. They finished and he left. And because they took this communion, they were strengthened to face all kinds of opposition. And don't forget, the scripture says, we have the bread, and we have the wine. And his body was broken, that you will not be broken. In other words, as we break this bread, no power will break you. Amen. Then, of course, we have the wine that represents the blood. I'm trying to give you a picture of what you're about to take now. This represents the blood. And the scriptures say there is life in the blood. And as you partake in this, I'm talking to somebody now, as you partake in this, any blood disease in your life shall be cleansed. There is life in the blood. If there be anyone here marked for death, as you partake in this communion, you will not die. In fact, the Bible says you shall not die but live. To declare the goodness of God. So based on that, Corinthians said, this cup which we take is the cup of blessing. As you partake in this, you are blessed. Amen. Your going out is blessed. Amen. Your coming in is blessed. Amen. Do you agree with that? Yes. Fine. Now stretch your hand towards me as I pray, based on what you have agreed on. Gracious Father, I sanctify this table, this communion table, for every man and every woman here present, that Lord, as we break this bread and take this wine, which is your body and your blood shared for us, I declare and I decree that the life in the blood shall be apportioned to everyone. Our strength shall be renewed. The blessings we are looking unto you for, by faith, we will receive it. In the name of Jesus, I lift up this oil. This is no more ordinary olive oil, but holy anointing oil. And the scriptures say the anointing breaks the yoke. If there be any yoke in any life here, by a touch of this oil, may that yoke be broken. Amen. With a touch of this oil, your strength shall be renewed. Amen. With a touch of this oil, new things will begin to happen to you. Amen. I therefore, by the authority vested upon me, sanctify this table for us all. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I will watch.
Jesus says he took the bread and he broke the bread and he said this is my body broken for you eat I therefore break this bread in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit whosoever will partake in this bread partakes and is the body of Jesus broken for us and the significance of this body shall find expressions in our lives in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. took the cup and he sucked from it and said this is my blood that was shed for you for the remission of your sins I therefore lift up this cup which is your blood shed for us and I decree that the spirit of God will rest upon this cup and as many as will partake, O oh God, life will be their portion. Strength will be their portion. Hallelujah. Their joy will be full. And your name will be glorified. Thank you, Hallelujah. Father, for doing this. Hallelujah. As I Hallelujah. sanctify the whole cups. In the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Hallelujah. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Worthy enemies made. Oh, he, oh, God is